Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our midweek devotion. It is January 24th, and that is a special a special day in the Joy household because today is the day live and in living color that Tanner Joy made his appearance on earth. It is the day we were parents all those months before while he hitched a free ride with mom everywhere he went. But this was a day visibly, physically, because uh, you got to hold him and care for him and love on him right there in living color and in person. This is the day I, I say I became dad and Tanner's the one who made me dad. And so he will never come across this video, but happy birthday to my son. He's 22 whole years old today, which means I'm that much older. And, and it means that uh, it's a special year being 22. It's one of the, well, because I'm a goob, it's one of those years where your first and second number are the same, and that doesn't happen for a whole another 11 years. It's the year he's going to get married to the wonderful Maddie, and we're madly in love with her as well. And so we're very thankful for his 22nd year just making it and 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 being given the gift to to live. Some of us take that one for granted too often. And seeing him become a man, it, it brings me a great deal of joy, not to sound goofy, uh, to see that. So happy birthday, Tan, the 21st, 24th. Of, of January. It's raining outside and you you might hear thunder in the background and I'm hoping that we get to do this together without the power blinking out because uh, all signs point to it having blinked at least once uh, since before I sat right down and thunder just rumbled before. In fact, you, I was wiping water and raindrops off my glasses here. So uh, anyhow, let's not waste time. Now, I want to show you a picture because pictures help a lot of us remember but I can't find it. I can't find it in my old emails. I can't find it in uh, on this desktop. I can't find it. So imagine an image that says marriage conference. Remember, especially if you're an East Lewisville person, you're going to get sick of me saying that, and I want you to get sick of me saying that because I want it ingrained. I want you to be a part of this. A marriage conference that we're going to be hosting here with Dr. Tate Cockrell March 1st and 2nd. If you want all of the information about that, all you need to do is text the word marriage, M-A-R-R-I-A-G-E, marriage. Text that to 662-803-3505. Is that right? <laughs> Live and in living color, let's look that up for sure because I can't remember and that's it's embarrassing, probably should have confirmed that. It's just in my phone, you know, Alicia. It's Alicia's telephone number. We, we all know it's Alicia's telephone number. Nope, nope. I was wrong. 662-803-3503. Don't get it wrong. Don't be wrong. Text marriage. I can't even spell, but I did that part right. M-A-R-R-I-A-G-E. Text that to 803-3503. You will get a text back that gives you the information about the link to pay you the registration. $30 a person. Includes dinner. Includes breakfast on the 2nd. Includes any child care that you might need. Includes the materials that you can use during the conference. It is a great opportunity to grow your marriage, to learn about healthy marriage. If you're my son and his fiance about to enter into that, into that world. If you're young, in love, and plan on marrying this person, but maybe not quite to the point of bringing that topic up fully. Still, I want you to learn. I want you to know. And it's a great chance just to be together, to learn together. Dr. Cockle taught me a lot of things. Uh, he was my pastoral counseling professor, and that's many years ago. That was all the way back in 2008. But a great professor then, a great professor now in charge of the D-Men studies at Southeastern Seminary. It's just going to be a fantastic time. So please, you do that. You register. You encourage others to register. We can just be a part of a, th of a movement of growth in the importance of these marriage relationships. But that's the announcement I'm going to be making between now and then. All other announcements... Uh, in my head at least, are secondary <laughs> because I just want that to be a great success for people. Real real quick with the time I have with you, I want to share a thought as all of the rain is coming down. I was, I was looking at the rain. I was thinking about the rain, and, and I saw where somewhere along the trip down roads here in Louisville, someone had a box of diapers, and... Uh, <laughs> The, it was an empty box, I guess, and maybe it fell out of their garbage pile, I don't know, but it had obviously gotten crammed into their culvert under their driveway. But enough water has come down and enough water pressure is flowing through that um, it pushed out. It pushed, it cleaned that culvert and pushed that box out. And the reason I knew that is because the box was kind of floating 
they're just having you know having come out of the culvert and them floating down the 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 random river <laughs> the wadi of Louisville that is flowing down the road just not so far away from us it reminded me of the very famous passage in Psalm 51 about wash me and I will be clean as white as snow now, sometimes what we fail to put into context and it says it there right at the beginning so many people may know David wrote Psalm 51 after Nathan had rightly accused him of the sin he had committed with Bathsheba and Uriah and all that whole situation. And David kind of wanting to, we might say, hide or brush off, not even deal with that sin. And yet Nathan came and bravely and rightly challenged him. You are that man, he said to David. And David repented. Psalm 51 is something that he wrote as a response. He's a broken man. He's a hurt man. Well, he he makes this request about being clean two times at the very near the very beginning of that psalm. So we'll call your attention to the first one, and that's the second one. I, I, I'm, I'm firing all over the place tonight. Wash me, verse 2 of chapter 51 says, or Psalm 51 says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. David says to wash me, just like the rain has washed that block out of the culvert. David is saying, wash me. But just five verses later, in verse 7, he says, well, this translation says, cleanse me, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Cleanse me, and I will be clean. Uh, more accurate is purify me or purge me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Now, what is hyssop? Do I use hyssop? Do I have hyssop in my house? And I don't know. Some of you may. But hyssop is medicine. It, it's, it's medicine for cleaning, but more specifically for healing sort of cleaning. So hyssop is something that we would use on leprosy sores. Hyssop is, I have a little note here to remind myself, it was connected with the plague. It was connected with all sorts of medical ailments. So when he's saying, literally purge me with hyssop, he's not saying, just brush this off. He's saying, heal me. Symbolically, being cleaned or purged or purified with hyssop is to have my soul restored, to be made healthy or cleansed all the way through and through. And so here's where I ended up thinking about that diaper box. To be cleansed will require the removal of the funk. See, I can't have a clean culvert without all the stuff being pushed out. I can't be cleansed the way David is crying for God to do that unless I let God have those dirty things that fall off of me. I can't be washed whiter than snow if I want to be clean but left dirty. If I want to be cleansed but continue on in my sickness. You know, I, I take the medicine that you give me, doctor, because I don't want to be sick any longer. I don't take the medicine but then desire or want or expect to stay ill. I don't go through the difficulty of chemotherapy, but want to hold on to my tumor. That's not how that works in anywhere, except it unfortunately happens here all too often, where we tell God we want to be cleansed. I want you to set me free, but I'm going to use that freedom to keep doing the things I am being freed from. I'm going to be just who I already was with this idea that you've made me okay. That's not the attitude of David. That ought not be the attitude of us. And so I, I offer that to you because I also drove down the road this afternoon and thought to myself that please don't let the flood in McMinn Circle be anywhere near today what it was all those months ago. And I know certainly our own, the rights or people in that area, they certainly see this water with a new sense of Lord forbid. But you can't stop that water. It, it just comes almost in the same image of, of God, you, once you say clean me, here it comes. You can't hold on. You can't be clean unless that stuff is gone. And here David is saying that. Pur purge, I really like that word. Push out all the things that need pushing out. And then I will be clean. If you wash me like that, I'll be whiter than snow. This is what we've been given the chance to ask for from God. And, and I, I just encourage you to not only ask for it 
accept it and then live as one who has received it, not making excuse for what we do wrong, but striving to be found in the in the path that God has laid before us. Grace covering all those failures that we had, have, and, and will have, unfortunately, in the days ahead. But I want a clean culvert. But that means that I... Other people might even see that. See, I saw that guy's, whoever that diaper box that is, I saw it. But it was on its way out. It wasn't shoved in making a blockage and causing a big trouble. It was pushed away. It was cleaned away. And God takes that and and it disappears in his grace. So be clean, just like the rain is reminding us of that even now. So be cleaned, be made whole in Jesus Christ. Let's, Let's pray before we end tonight. Almighty, I bless you and I thank you for this rain. I know it's necessary. I know it has a purpose. I know all of that goes far beyond my capabilities to understand or comprehend. Tonight, I just want to be grateful for you. I want to thank you for the life you've given us to live. I want to be especially thankful for my son, my oldest son. I love all three of my children, but the first one made me father, made me a dad, grew my understanding of your love for me in ways that he would never comprehend or understand until he becomes a dad too. And I thank you for him, the life that he's lived. I thank you for everything he's been allowed to learn and the multitude of things that lie before him for learning. You are the Lion of Judah, and you viciously protect us. You also are jealous over us and desire to make us clean. So may we be like David now and desire that type of cleanliness, that type of cleanliness that requires those things that have clogged us up to be gone, to be moved away so that your grace and mercy can flow as freely through us as I saw that water flowing down the street today. I thank you for making that possible and for doing it over and through all of us who make that request of you, calling out for salvation, calling out for restoration, and in repentance, desiring to be restored to the place that you set out for us before the beginning of all other things. You are so good. Thank you for letting us know that goodness, to see that goodness and to be a part of it. We, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, everybody. Thank you so much for being here tonight. You know, I've decided I hate this thing being this direction. So from now on, if you see it hanging down from the sky, not that you might care or not, but it's because I don't like it this way anymore, and I've, I've committed to saying that to myself. I just don't like that. So I'm changing. It'll be different next week. Come back and see if I actually remember to do that. Okay, I love you. Thank you so much. Stay dry. Stay safe. Stay out of the weather as much as you can. But no matter what you do or where you go, remember, no matter what, that your great calling through Jesus Christ is to pour out kindness on the world around you, all because of the kindness Jesus has poured out on you. I love you. Good night. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.